Right, this is the original WTF exciter, which does stand for What's the Frequency? Because the idea was to take out the two pin crystal of the circuit and uh, it actually oscillated without it. But I did need the clip leads coming out, uh, quite an expansive amount, a couple of clip leads of this size and then the LED between. And I thought, well, I should be able to get rid of this need for all this, and so redesigned it. And what we've got here now is another build of it. But I'm going to rename it to the three coil exciter because uh, that's what it uses. What we've got here is the L1, 1000 UH, and we've got an L2, and we've got an L3. And the change to the circuit is really quite easy. Um, took a while to get there, but it is quite easy to do. Instead of L3 being here, that's now the L2, and I come off from here with the L3. So there we are. And it all came about really through testing a number of coils that I made and you can see the frequencies here that they resonated at and the stars are to do with how good the output seemed to be, the wireless output or the final result. And you can see really the kind of linearity there that the amount of turns was the lower the frequency and, um, and this one here became the L2 and that one there is the L3. So next thing I'll do is to connect this thing up now and show you what it does. Right, so what we have here is a cheap Chinese booster circuit. They go from about 3.5 volts to 30 volts and they're only a couple of dollars and about the same price for one of these voltage screens. And by twisting this little pot here, um, we can change the voltage and it makes for a nice little power supply. So anyway, that's what's feeding into this now and you can see that the stifler ring there, um, the stifler diode loop is running at the side We've got this one that's on here, and if I take a regular AV plug, then you can see that there's plenty of wireless field around. I mean, it's not the most efficient, I suppose, compared to um, a lot of exciters, but it's most certainly running. And another interesting side to this is the interaction between the L2 and the L3. And if I, first of all, there's not much of a change if I just touch the coil. But if I wobble this thing backwards and forwards, you can see the change there on that LED at the back and also if I get in the wrong place this thing will come out of resonance and actually stop the circuit I wonder if I can actually, <laughs> I've actually made it run better now you can see anyway that's the point the way that the L2 and 3 play together and it's currently running at 8 megahertz with this setup but however you choose your coils is the frequency you'll get somewhere between 2 megahertz and about 9 megahertz right anyway I'll turn the voltage up and we'll see what happens here we are at 9 volts and from this point onwards you can see that the LED on the circuit is actually on and it is a really good indicator uh, for those purposes. The right hand side now, the stiffler loop, is nicely illuminated indeed and also this one at the back has increased its brightness. I suppose if I pick this up and we see what kind of, well there we are. There's a nice, nice little feel going on now at the 9 volts. Here's an interesting aside that can be shown at 9 volts. Um, talk of RFID, I'd be thinking about credit cards and uh, sort of these circuit boards are about the same as credit cards. And what I did was I got 12 1N4148s, uh, like the Stifler Loop, and the wire I've actually made concentric, not very well, but the whole idea was just to test something, and it does work. And with this exciter, which isn't always the case with um, exciter fields for some odd reason, now this, if I turn this 360 degrees, the light always stays on. And I was very happy to see that. So I can turn that wherever I want. And as I say, on a lot of um, the receiver coils or methods or what have you, you go off the plane, say, to 90 degrees and the thing stops. But this is 360 degrees. So yeah, I was pleased to see that. And at 12 volts, well, I still don't get much luck with the bulbs, uh, the mains bulb innards, but then again, it's only running at 8 megahertz, this one. Um, we have this thing over here now with a clip lead on it, so the distance is a lot further away from the setup, and again, much further away with that one over there with the stifler loop and the uh, ferrite rod inside. But um, mainly, the nice thing is, we've got a neon running directly, and this one's actually only got one leg, the other one came off on the thing years ago 
But if I, I can use my finger there to brighten it up as well as I use my own capacitance. And uh, that's a nice little effect really, but it does run neons, which I was delighted to see. And um, as I say, just with one leg and directly from the output of the L3 coil. Okay, thanks for watching.